Hey, hello, Vineyard. Happy Wednesday. I hope your week is rolling along well. I hope you are enjoying this sun and warmth that actually feels like it might stick around, which is just awesome. Now, before we get into an update and, and devotionals, I want to acknowledge some family business. Uh, you received an email from me this past Monday, and I want to thank you all for, for the awesome amount of support and prayer we received through emails, text messages, and phone calls. As we move into the summertime and begin to make a plan for building some structure, I'll keep you updated, but please continue to pray and reach out if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Now, as we prepare for summer at the Vineyard, we are looking forward to celebrating Pentecost as the next holiday on the church calendar. The narrative of Pentecost is, is captured in Acts chapter 2, and it provides us with some family history, history of the church, that in this event, it truly inaugurated the age of the church. Now, just as the coming of Jesus in the Christmas narrative brought a new age for how God interacted with his creation, Pentecost does the same thing with the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, some might call this baptism of the Holy Spirit, filling of the Spirit, or indwelling of the Spirit. I think in most cases, we're talking about the same thing. Each of these terms identify that when we place our faith in Jesus, we are empowered by his Spirit. Now, there are a lot of places to find division in, in all of this, and so as we unpack what Scripture teaches, I want to be careful, and, and I will be careful, to distinguish between what I know what I think, and what I'm just completely clueless on. Uh, one of the realities of teaching about the Holy Spirit is that over the history of the church, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been weaponized and used as a mechanism of control over people that just wanted a relationship with God. This reality is um, also uh, tied to the reality that, that churches are made up of a bunch of perfecting works. We're not made up of, of a bunch of perfect works. And because of that, as we are perfected together, we can cause each other a lot of pain. As a part of God's design for discipleship, I think that there's some intentionality there. Where we're given the opportunity to exercise grace and practice and participate in the ministry of reconciliation. But sometimes it goes beyond normal church reality of life and it enters into the realm of abuse. Teachings on the availability, the process for receiving, and the evidence of receiving or having received the Holy Spirit have been weaponized by groups and by men for centuries. And so we need to be careful uh, about this. We need to carefully line out what we say. We need to line out what we mean by what we say, and also by what authority do we say it. It's in this intentionality that we can bring healing to those that have been assaulted by weaponized faith and, and help fully experience the reality of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this coming Sunday, we're going to continue to Advent Pentecost, preparing to mark the day when the Holy Spirit poured out on the followers of Jesus and inaugurated the age of the church. Just as we finish Advent during Christmas time with the Christmas Eve service, we're going to finish our Adventing Pentecost with a night of worship at Thirsty Street Brewing Company in downtown Billings on the evening of Pentecost, which is May 28th. So in the weeks between now and then on Sundays and in these Wednesday updates, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, about the activity of the Holy Spirit, and how we experience all of this. It is a great season. It truly feels like spring is here, and I'm excited for what is in front of us. We've got a lot going on, if you, and we've got a lot to talk about. So please reach out if there's anything on your mind. And Vineyard, uh, please pray for me. Know that I am praying for you, and I will see you on Sunday.